Welcome to Oxford History Today. I'm your host, Ron Brock. Uh, this week, I thought we would explore the history of Leonard. Uh, last episode, we took a look at Thomas, and I thought it'd be interesting to talk a little bit about the history of the towns that uh, surround Oxford here, since this is the Northeast Oakland Historical Society, and we take in all of Northeast Oakland County. So today we have a guest and her name is Shar Sotheby. And we also have another guest that's going to be with her who will come on a little bit later. And we will get her on the uh, camera here and let her tell us a little bit about Leonard. Hi, Shar. Hi. Welcome to the show. Come Thank on you. and sit down, please. Okay. We're going to talk today a little bit about the, the history of Leonard. And I know you're quite a history buff the way we all are. So I'm going to turn it over to you and you can just tell us what you know about Leonard. Well, I know little bits and pieces about Leonard. I, Leonard to me is a, a fascinating little place and I suppose almost every small town has a similar history. But it's amazing to me that it even came about. The land was swampy, it was hard to get to. Those early settlers, um, it must have been quite a trek to come. Mm. And then can you imagine the ladies coming? There's nothing there. <laughs> they have to make everything that they're going to have. And what I've read in the history book is that there were like six houses there. And a man, um, they wanted to put the railroad in. Okay. And um, Mr. Owen Murphy, was uh, he was the postmaster at Trombley, and um, Trombley was mm -hmm. Leonard. Okay. But he had a place north of Leonard on Boardman Road, and he realized the railroad was coming through, and he decided that um, he would want to be part of that. And another farmer, Peter Brewer, he donated the land for a depot and for the railroad to come through. And so that's how Leonard got started, and um, it's after that, Frank Rowley came, and he saw the opportunity. He built a, a mill, mm -hmm. and that first mill was powered by horses. They figured they, there wasn't steam yet. Okay. And Frank Rowley had many businesses. He had um, uh, the mill, he had a basket factory, he had an apple dryer, and because of this, he then of course they have people coming they need people to work mm -hmm. so they have to build more houses um, then their uh, mill burns down so they build a new mill and that is in the location of the present mill okay and it just there's an old story in the history book that says this person went to sleep one night and he could look out and saw nothing. The next morning when he got up, there was a house with smoke coming out the chimney. <laughs> and it sounds like Leonard came about that fast. Quickly, yeah. Yes. It's amazing how uh, really it was the railroads that, did, that really dictated the development of the small towns and stuff in this area. It is very true. Uh, and it was, again, the, the towns that did not have a uh, railroad go through them didn't really survive all that well. See, Lakeville was uh, started before Leonard. Mm -hmm. And had the railroad gone through Lakeville, Leonard probably never would have gotten as big as it, what it, what right. it was to be. And Leonard became incorporated. Lakeville never did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just the way it was. The, yeah. the, the railroads are what really brought the people and brought the business to these areas. I was reading in one of the books, and, and I think I remember reading this, that they had two million feet of timber per year cut in that area and going out on railroad cars. Railroad cars. And in the early history of Leonard, there was a passenger train that went south and went north every morning every afternoon, mm -hmm. as well as a freight train that went north and south twice a day. Okay. Now that's a, that's a lot for that little community, but anything that you wanted, their, their little stores would have um, fish, oysters, you could get a piano, all these things, they had some in their stores and then anything else they would order and it would come in on the train. Come by train, sure. Even a house. Because mm -hmm. Sears and Roebuck, you could order a house. A house kit, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have one such house in Leonard. Okay, yeah, yeah, you see a few still, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, you mentioned they had an apple dryer. Now, we, we had one here in Oxford, too. Mm -hmm. It was on East Street. 
and it's interesting that uh, there would be that much demand for dried apples, but I suppose no refrigeration yes. and uh, uh, no canning commercial facilities. It was a you good had way to preserve to it, it some way. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see, that's how the basket factory came about too, is because these farmers were, have all these apples and produce to get someplace. There's people that'll buy it. So they had a basket factory so they could put their produce in baskets and they would put straw down on the wagons, put the baskets on there to keep the fruit from bruising and bring it to Leonard and mm -hmm. then it would go out on the train. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, we have a few photos here uh, of the, the basket factory, the people that work there. And we have quite a few baskets down in our lower level. Maybe we can take a look at those a little bit later. Sure. Uh, I know you also had a butter factory there. We've got a uh, document on it. But I think there's some other businesses there that were in Leonard, wasn't there? Yes. Uh, the butter factory was going north and on the left-hand side. And mm -hmm. across the road from there was a, a slaughterhouse. Okay. There were a number of blacksmiths and liveries in town because everybody went by horse. Mm -hmm. So that was needed. There was the hotel. Um, and the hotel and Roland Hall and the Leonard Methodist Church are the three oldest buildings, I believe, in town. Now there's um, another hotel or a halfway house or something, that boarding house, that might be older. I'm not sure. I'll have to ask Janet when she comes to talk. Um, but I know that 1885 is when Roland Hall was built. Okay. 1889, the church was built. In 1900, the hotel was up and running. Um, they then later years, um, they at one time had three stores, three wow. grocery stores in Leonard. There was a bank, um, there was a millinery shop where you could buy, ladies could buy clothes, hats and such things. They had a barber shop, which we still have a barber shop. Um, there was a cement factory and that was run by the Sotheby's and they, we have pictures of that where they made columns for houses. Okay. Mm -hmm. They made um, handmade block. They had their own forms. Um, trying to think of other businesses that were there. Um, they had a racetrack. Yeah, I saw that on an early map that they had a racetrack there. Yes. And um, there, see, Leonard is kind of funny in that it was really very, very small when it was first incorporated. Mm -hmm. and. You had, up on the four corners, you had the hotel, and you had Roland Hall, and there was a, um, the drugstore and doctor's office. And then across the, that's what was there in the beginning, then down by, most of the activity happened down by the railroad. So you have the elevator there, you have the store called Heenan's, which later became Heenan and Hibblers. Hibblers. And they um, had all kinds of merchandise. They had, the first phone was there. Okay. And telegraph and post office. Do you know that the line came from Oxford first to mm -hmm. Leonard? But that only serviced a portion of the area. So these people that were near the railroad tracks, they wanted phones too. So they made a deal with Romeo and they bought their own poles, their own connectors, and their wire. Wow. And they strung a line from Romeo to Leonard. The, the people themselves did. That's Isn't that cool. awesome? Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a break now, Char, and uh, when we'll come back, we'll uh, continue some more on this. Okay. Thank you.
Hi, welcome back to the show. Shar, uh, we were talking a little bit about uh, the Sotheby's in early Leonard, and I understand you've got some photos of the uh, house that they built and uh, their factory. Maybe we can show the, the folks here. Uh, I certainly what that do. Looks like. Great. Um, Charlie Sotheby mm -hmm. was um, my husband's great grandfather. Okay. And he came with his son, Jesse, and they came from Rochester to build this house for Wren Cascaden. And that house was built in 1904. Oh, this is cool. And then this is a block house, I see. Yes, handmade block. And I see it's got some uh, cement features for the porch here. Yes. So it's all pretty much masonry, isn't it? It is. Yeah, that, was cool. their, that was what they did. They were masons from England. Oh, wow. Neat. And you've got a photo here of the product that came out of their factory and it's all precast concrete. They also made things like, um, because it was horse and buggy time, mm -hmm. they made what they call steps Yes. And, the, and they would be in people's front yards so that when they stepped out of the buggy, they stepped onto those because it was a long drop down. Right, onto the there's buggy still, steps. We have one set yeah. and there's one set up by uh, Leonard School that okay. says, I think it says Hibbler on it. All right. Because yeah. that must have been their home. Mm hmm. That's really interesting. Uh, maybe we'll take a look at some of the photos that we have here. Okay. And uh, you can tell us a little bit about those buildings. Okay. And uh, we'll just go from there. Okay. Hi, uh, here we go. We're over here with our photos of Leonard, what we have here in this display case. We've got some more photos in the vault there, but uh, we just have so much room and that's <laughs> what we can put out at one time. We had talked a little bit before about the butter company and there's their certificate right there. Yeah, that's interesting. And here's some folks from the basket factory. Mm -hmm. And I'll let you explain the rest of the buildings. Well, as best I can, the, the Leonard Hotel is there and if you haven't been to Leonard lately, they've done a major renovation on the outside. It's beautiful, and they are going to, this next year, replace the balcony that was on the front. As I understand, it won't be as deep as this one was because people could actually sit up there. Mm -hmm. I don't think that will be, they will have that opportunity now, but it's close to what it used to look like, and it's beautiful. Um, I don't know a great deal about Dr. Hare. Mm -hmm. Dr. Rob, I bought his business, I believe I read that, and Dr. Rob um, was the doctor that most people talked about. He was a um, very good doctor. They said he went wherever people were. He, if the roads were really bad, he actually went by horse. Okay. And that he developed some medicines himself. So hmm. I don't know what those are or were or where they are in history if they still use some of the things he developed. Mm -hmm. And there's the elevator there on the left. Here the go. village of Leonard now does own this elevator and um, parts of it are being torn down. As you'll see those sheds on the back, they no longer exist. Mm -hmm. And um, it is um, going to be a museum store, um, a gathering place for people that are on the trail. There will be bathrooms there. Um, there will be a place for people to sit and eat. On the back side, a deck will be built that's handicap accessible so that, um, and the, so the people, no matter what their capability, they can get up to the building and enjoy it. The front part that was torn off or partially torn off at this point will be a deck. And when that's done and there's more money raised, they plan to build a community center, replace that front part, and it will be a community center. Oh, that would be great. Yep. Uh, why don't we talk a little bit about how Leonard actually got its name? Leonard got its name, um, there was a man named Owen Murphy, and he came from out east, and he stopped um, at a place on Boardman Road, and he became the postmaster there. And it, his place that he lived was actually a barn that's still there. Okay. And he and his wife and children lived there. And when he realized that the railroad was coming, he decided he wanted to be part of it. And 
a man named Peter Brewer, who was a farmer, donated the land in Leonard for the railroad, and he donated a place for the depot to be built. Okay. And Owen Murphy and his family were hired to come and be the postmaster, and so he and his wife moved into this depot, and they also had a little store there until a house could be built. Mm -hmm. And it was called Trombley in the beginning, and I'm not sure why it was called Trombley. Um, I know that there's a Trombley Mountain, or was, that was in Macomb County. Mm -hmm. Whether that was something the Indians had named, I'm not sure. But um, they decided they would name it Leonard because a man named Leonard Rowland donated property on the Four Corners area for people to put businesses there. And because in his honor, they named the town Leonard. Rowland was a name that was already designated to another community. Okay. So it became Leonard. And um, because he had given this, Leonard uh, named the town, they named the town Leonard. And because they named the town Leonard, uh, Mr. Rowland built Rowland Hall okay, and gave right. it to the community. Oh, good. Now we know, Leonard, how it was named. So that's great. Maybe we could go downstairs and we'll take a look at the uh, baskets that we have on display. Okay. And I think we also have a couple pictures there of people that worked in the basket factory. Okay. Okay, so let's go on down there. These are some of the baskets that we have uh, on display here. Uh, we believe some of them were made in Leonard. Uh, maybe you could take a look at them and uh, see if you recognize anything. Well, I have one looks a lot like this at my house that was there and mm -hmm. I'm kind of excited to see this because I'm thinking maybe it was made there. Very well could be, yeah. 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 My mother-in-law has one like this at her house. Okay. So. And I, I think I've probably thrown a few away that probably... Yeah, they kind of deteriorate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're bad shape. We have a larger picture, similar to the one that we had upstairs there, uh -huh. of people that worked in the basket factory here. And we also have another one, a picture here, of some of their product that they put yeah. out. All the baskets. Those look like they would be apple baskets. Yeah. Very interesting. So it's kind of cool. We've got some more baskets down here of a finer, I, I don't know if you call them a grass or a, a weaving reed, I'm not sure. Yes. I'm not much of a basket expert myself. But yeah, they're kind of cool. Uh, maybe we'll go back upstairs now and uh, okay. we'll meet our other guest. Okay. Canine Stray Rescue is Oxford's own local dog rescue. Each year they take in hundreds of dogs and bring them into suitable homes. A certified nonprofit organization, Canine Dog Rescue strives to give pound dogs a new leash on life. To donate, adopt, or even volunteer, call them at 248-628-0435 or go to their website, dogsaver.org, and click on the Canine Stray Rescue League link. I think at this time we're going to introduce Janet Ostrander. Uh, she was born and raised in Leonard, so she can give us a little personal insight on uh, how Leonard developed and uh, kind of what went on back there. Hi, Janet. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank Please you. have a seat. You were born and raised in Leonard? I was born and raised in Leonard. My grandparents owned a store okay. in downtown Leonard, and my dad uh, was born in the house I live in. 
oh, plus wow. his two sisters. And uh, he passed away at 99. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, that Leonard was the only address he ever had. In fact, he was born on Forest Street and he died on Forest Street. Oh my. And he, that was his only address hmm. for all those years. That's great. When you were growing up, uh, what do you remember about the railroad? I remember the railroad, and I've been told, I was too young to remember, but my mother and my aunt and my sister and myself got on that, as Char said, it went north and it went south. Mm -hmm. And we got on that train and we took it to Grayling. Wow. That must have been quite a trip. It was. It took a long time. To go to Grayling. And we, I had a cousin that was in nurses training in Grayling and we went to see her. Oh, okay. The uh, businesses that were in Leonard at the time when you were growing up, can you remember what was there? There was two grocery stores, one being my grandfather's. Mm -hmm. There was a factory on the uh, southwest corner, a gas station, which my dad and my grandfather built. Okay. And uh, when uh, Bob McCollum got out of the service, he come and lived with my grandparents. He was a friend of my dad's. And uh, my dad and my grandfather built the gas station and put him in business. Oh, okay, so that's how he got his business. That's okay. how he got the business. And then after Bob retired, my dad sold the station to Kurt Strobel, who now still owns it. So Kurt's the only second owner. And that's the repair shop, it's there, mm -hmm. the garage, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's great, that's nice to know a history. There was another gas station across the street, south of the corner, another gas station, mm -hmm. Wilbur Hordes. So there was two when I was growing up. Two gas stations. Two gas stations and two grocery stores. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Were either one of the, the grocery stores a chain or were they just no, privately owned? privately owned. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, was the uh, apple drying factory still there? No, that, that was, was gone. before that? Mm -hmm. uh, how about the basket factory? No, that was gone too. That was gone too, okay. Yep. So these had to be really early businesses is what we're kind of finding out. Yes. And uh, the train that went through there, what was the name of the train? Was it the Polly Ann, what they call the Polly Ann now? I don't know. Don't remember. Do you? Polly Ann, Oxford, and Port Austin. Okay, so it was the Polly Ann Trail that went through okay. there, and yep. that's the uh, train, rather, and that's the trail that they use today. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, while you were growing up, did you go to school? Went All through Leonard? Uh, is that? Went to school okay. in Leonard through the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And then when I got out of the eighth grade, we had our choice to go to Elmont or to go to Oxford. Okay. And I went to Elmont. And uh, I guess our class was about split, half and half. Went to Elmont and half went to Oxford. And then I think. I think it was five years after that when they consolidated with Oxford and then the students couldn't go to Elmont anymore unless they paid tuition. Oh, okay. So at that time they didn't have a high school uh, in no. Leonard. Okay. No. Um, they used to go to 10th grade, mm -hmm. but then they lowered it to 8th. Eight. 8th grade? Mm -hmm. Okay. And last, last four years was high school. Yes. Okay. And then back when it was 10th, you had your choice of Romeo or Oxford. Oh, okay. And part of the students went to Romeo. That's interesting, being in a different county even mm -hmm. uh, than a township. Well, Elmont was too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So. Do you recall uh, during the war, and I don't know how old you were then, do you remember how the businesses operated? Because I know a lot of the guys were gone. A lot of the guys were gone, and I've been told that uh, my grandfather was a merchant and when he heard of a soldier that was overseas mm -hmm. and he had a wife and especially if he had children, my grandfather paid their rent. Oh wow. They never knew it 
uh -huh. and I'd probably tell him tales out of school. But uh, he would uh, make sure they didn't lose their homes. Well, that's wonderful. And he that's paid, wonderful. He paid the rent. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really interesting things that happened during uh, World War II as compared to later conflicts. I don't know that they call them wars, Korea and Vietnam. It was just a different atmosphere here at home. Mm -hmm. uh, people were really behind uh, the military, I think, during World War II. So it's my, really interesting. My mother had three brothers in the war. And uh, when my mother's father died, the village put the, um, operate the telephone service in her home so she'd have income. Oh, okay. So she was the operator for the area. All right, yeah. Yeah, I know we've got a couple photos here of the uh, uh, switchboard mm -hmm. that they had here in Oxford. And it's, it's really interesting when you show it to the children that came to come through here, uh, that you had to hook up these wires for people to talk to each you other. Sure did. They just, they've got no concept of that now because now they whip out their cell phone and bip, 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 and away they go, you know. So it's really different how things have changed. Yes, uh, yes. Do you, is there anything else you recall from your childhood? Just, I don't know, everybody knew everybody and uh, it was friendly and you better, if the lady on the, the street told you to do something, you better do it. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, and uh, there was a lady that lived, uh, well, it, it was a group of stores and uh, they rented a, a place there and she was basically the town mother. Okay. And everybody listened to Mrs. Green. <laughs> and uh, boy, if you didn't behave, you knew that you were in trouble at home because she'd see to it. That's interesting. The, uh, uh, did you, do you find now that kids back then were more respectful than they are today? Absolutely. Or, yeah. The discipline is gone. You're just a little bit different today, that's for sure. Uh, anything else you'd like to talk about uh, as far as the history of Leonard goes? No, um, we've just always been there. My sisters and brother still live in, in there. That's and great. And uh, my kids, in fact, my, da one da my daughter lives next door to me. Hmm. And my granddaughter lives next door to her. Oh my! And uh, there used to be a I'm wondering uh, a building between Roland Hall and uh, the old post office. Okay. And is now the fire the old fire hall, but there used to be a garage there. Okay. And my grandfather and an Orby Althouse tore that down and built the house across the road from me that still stands today out of that garage. Out of the lumber? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. Well, it's certainly been a pleasure talking to you, Janet, and uh, it's kind of nice to hear a personal history of a town. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. And uh, thank you, and uh, we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Terry Stiles. Did you know that Charter Channel 191 and AT&T Channel 99 are the only television stations you can find all the events and news just for you? Oxford News This Week is your news closer to home. Catch us right here weekdays at noon, 6.30 and 11 p.m. and weekends at noon and 11 p.m. See, See you, you there. there.